welcome to our YouTube channel. We are busy with a series about how to create a godly marriage. And in our previous mm. video, we talked about how to create a vision. Yeah, how to get what, what vision for your marriage. Yes. So today we are going to do, do this in two parts. First, Stephanus is going to share about. <laughs> Just Ephesians 5, the vision. What, what I see in the Word of God is the vision for a godly marriage and how to bring that vision into reality. Yes, and then in the second part, yeah. I'm going to share about how to become still, how to find the stillness inside you. So you can see that vision, so you can get that vision, so it can become part of you. Yes. And you can bring it into reality. Yes. So okay. enjoy. See you soon. See you soon. Now I trust that you've all done your homework. That was to read Ephesians 5, from verses 22 to 32. For that is the vision, that is the picture. You see, vision is picture. You have to have a picture. You have to see it. So what you have to understand about this is, as you read through Ephesians 5, from verses 22 to 32, he's giving you a picture. And the entire concept here of marriage, and what a marriage should look like, between believers, between sons of God, between a husband and a wife who serves the Lord, who's born again, is the picture of Christ and the church. What he wants you to see is husbands. He wants you to see Christ and how he treats the church, what he does for the church. He wants you to have that in front of your eyes and see because you are the leader. You set the tone. You set the tone. Christ is the initiator in any relationship with the, with the church. He initiates. It wasn't our idea for us to look like him, to be like him, to be righteous, to be holy, to be without sin, to be sons of God. It was his. So he came and he gave substance to it. So what you have to understand is when you see Christ, you see Yeshua, you see the word in the flesh, you see substance. So the whole time your picture is, it's not what would Jesus do, for he's in you, he lives in you, he's part of you, you are part of him. It is you embracing your righteousness, embracing your position in him. And now putting that in front of your eyes and saying, I am righteous, I am holy. As I see in Ephesians 5 where he starts and he says, For the husband provides leadership for the wife, just as Christ provides leadership for his church, as the saviour and reviver of the body. You take your cue from him. And you give leadership the way he gives. He leads the church. What is the picture? The shepherd that walks before the flock, that goes before. It is not that your wife is behind you. She's beside you. But you set the tone. You give leadership. How do you do this? You pray. You meditate. You read it. You fill yourself with the understanding that I am the leader as Christ leads the church. And then you draw upon the Spirit in you. And as you become still, as you spend time with Him, as you meditate. Meditate means to see, to think, to chew, to go over. To, to, to put this picture in your mind of Christ the shepherd. And saying, that is what I am to my wife. And then wives, he says to you in verse 1, for wives, this means being supportive to your husbands, just like you are tenderly devoted to our Lord. Devoted means loyal. It means you are supportive. It means you are there. You undergird. You are, you'd cover his back. That's what you do. How do you do that? As unto the Lord. As you do unto him, you do unto your husband. So you've got this picture of you're the church. Your husband is like Christ. He fulfills the same role Christ for the church. The husband fulfills for the wife. The same role and the same way the church relates to Yeshua as head of the church. You relate to your husband's wives. You put it there. You see it. You have that picture. And now you go. 
In verse 24 it says, In the same way the church is devoted to Christ, let the wives be devoted to their husbands in everything. Some translations would say submissive, submit to their husbands. That's what it means to be devoted, to be loyal, to follow. Where he leads, you follow. How do you do this? You take your cue again. You put that vision. You put that picture in front of you. And anytime you come up against the situation, you say, okay, Lord, I'm able to do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. The anointing which strengthens me. I can do this because I'm a son of God. I am righteous. I am holy. I can choose this. I can embrace this. I'm able to do. And then you walk it out. You pray it out. You see it. You speak it. You declare it. Husbands, to you, he says, verse 25, and to husbands, you are to demonstrate love for your wives with the same tender devotion that Christ demonstrated for us, his bride. That he demonstrated to his bride. For he died for us, sacrificing, sacrificing himself. That's what you do, husbands. You die for your wife. You die to self. You die to, to your own ideas, your own ideals, your own, your own ways. You embrace it. And you, a wise husband knows his wife is an asset. She is the crown. She is the one. The happier she is, the happier you are. The more you give yourself to her, the more you see to that she has what she needs. That she, that you fulfill her. You are fulfilled. It's the way the Lord designed it. It's the perfect symbiotic relationship. And how do you do this? You put it in front of your eyes. I keep on telling it. You see it. You meditate it. You speak it. You speak it. You craft it. You create with your words. The whole time you're speaking it. You're saying, Lord, I'm able. I'm there. I'm doing it. I'm seeing it. I'm walking it. And verse 27 says, All that he does in us is designed to make us a mature church for his pleasure until we become a source of source of praise to him glorious and radiant beautiful and holy without fault or flaw that's what you do for your wives husbands the way you speak to her the way you treat her you do that you bring it you bring it out in her you bring the best out in her and as she becomes that love is natural for a woman. Submission follows as you lead. As you demonstrate Christ to her, it becomes easy for her to be devoted, to be loyal, to be submitted, to be there. And all the time you see it. You study the word. You read about Yeshua. You see. You put it in front of your eyes. How does he treat the church? Why is you put it in front of your eyes? How? Do the church relate to Yeshua? How do we obey him? How do we serve him? Same way, my husband. You see the leadership. You see the laying down. You see the dying to himself. How he paid the ultimate price, husbands. You pay that price for your wives. You put it there. It's different for everyone. You take the leading of the Holy Spirit. What will work for one and what your wife needs is not what my wife needs. You have to discover. It's a journey. It's a journey. But you dwell with her with understanding because you're able to understand and to know. And then verse 32 is where I finish. Marriage is the beautiful design of the Almighty, a great and sacred mystery, meant to be a vivid example of Christ and His church. That's for you, both spouses. That's what you see. It is to be an example of Christ in the church. It is to demonstrate the relationship between Yeshua and his bride. And in that demonstration, he is glorified. And in that, you have honor. And you are fulfilled. And you come to the completeness of yourself. You speak it. You think it. You meditate it. You sit. And when you think on your wives' husbands, you see this. When you think on your husbands' wives, you see this. 
becomes. You form that inside you until it takes shape in the natural. And in that, you become one. A perfect oneness. That is how you will create this, bring this, craft it, make it visible in the natural. First you see, then you see substance. All the time, remember, Yeshua is the substance of the word. He is God in the flesh. When I see him, I see me, I see us. When I see him and his church, I see myself and my wife. I see myself and my husband, wives. That's it. That's it. Just there, as simple as that. It's as easy as that. I bless you on your journey. May you discover the joy of becoming Christ-like. And may you discover the joy of seeing your marriage show forth manifest, reveal Christ in the earth, the picture of Christ and his church. Be blessed. There were two accounts where we know that Jesus was praying, where we actually knew what he was praying. And one of the scriptures is John 17 verse 15, where Jesus prayed, I do not ask that you will take them out of this world, but that you will keep and protect them. So when Jesus said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you, he wasn't talk of, talking about um, when you die, that you will go to heaven and then you will be where he is. Um, Acts um, 7 verse 48 and 49 in the New King James Version, it says, however, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says, heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. So when Yeshua died, the veil of the temple was torn. And because of his death, we now have free access into the holiest of holies. Um, so when Jesus um, was talking about his temple or a house, he said, I'm not living in temples. I'm not living in a house. He was talking about your body. He's living inside you. So in John 1 verse 1 to 3, in the beginning was the Word, and the word was, word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. So in the beginning you were with God, and in Him, and then He created you. Now let's quickly look at the physical body. Um, God created you with a pineal gland. And when you, you, you use your pineal gland, for instance, if you, um, if you are um, composing or you are an artist or an engineer or an art, art architect, <laughs> first you use your imagination. And when you use your imagination so that you see it with your spiritual eye, before you can create it, that for that you use your pineal gland inside your brain. So um, in Genesis 32 verse 30 in the New King James Version, we read about Jacob where he had an encounter with God and he saw him face to face. So Jacob called the place pineal for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. So in Joshua 1 verse 8 in the New King James Version, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it or in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So although we are not, we are not in the law anymore, the principle stays the same. So we meditate on him day and night. And when we meditate, we become still. And there are different measures to use to become still, to get a vision for your marriage or for your life. Remember, everything that is in Jesus is available for us as well. 
because we are seated in heavenly places. We are in him. He is our wraparound presence. And even the seven spirits that is, um, that's in Revelation where um, it says um, about the seven spirits in front of the throne of God. The seven spirits of God is inside us as well. And we have free access to it, whatever we need. Um, when we go and we find a silent place and we, we go inside ourselves by using our pineal gland, our imagination, we go deeper into him, into us. But if you want to know more, um, you can go and um, listen to, I did two interviews on this YouTube channel. One, one I did with Kevin Hall about um, contemplation and another interview I did with Melanie Nevenhuyzen from um, Can Cadence Meditation. Go and watch that interview. They will teach you how to become silent within. And then to end my session, um, the, the Hebrew word zakkar is a verb. And the, the, the word zakkar means to remember. It's thinking that becomes doing. So the purpose of zakkar is not simply to bring something to mind, but it is to bring something to mind and then into your heart and then you can act upon it. So when you become silent, and you engage him face to face. You find that quiet place, that quiet spot. And you go into yourself and you see him face to face. That's where you get a vision for your marriage. A vision for your life. But it's very important to become silent. Zakar. <laughs> Until next time. Shalom.